Hello everybody, this is Mandy Broderick here coming at you with the first session of the Facebook Live cooking series. So I am actually really excited to do this for you all and I've put quite a bit of work into it and I really hope you enjoy yourself. So for those of you who maybe don't know how a Facebook Live video works, um, and by the way, I'm aware you can't see me right now. Any of you that are watching right now, this is live, so in real time, I can you can hear me, I can see the comments that you post. So if you'll have any questions, if you want to say anything about you know the program during it, I'll try my best to look at the con like the comments. So you know, feel free to ask any questions that you want. I'll be able to see them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So today we are going to talk about a recipe that uses the lovely, lovely pumpkin because you know it is that time of year, right? Thanksgiving's literally right around the corner. And not only is pumpkin, you know, our favorite fall food, but it also has a lot of benefits. So pumpkin is actually really high in mono and saturated fats, which will lead to a healthy heart. It's high in vitamin A, which will help you with your vision. It's high in zinc, which will actually lower your risk of osteoporosis. And it is also high in fiber, which is going to decrease your risk of colon cancer. So for those of you who don't eat pumpkin, you know, what are you waiting for? Not in all, it's a fall superfood, but it's also a superfood in itself. So if you don't eat pumpkin a lot, why aren't you? I challenge you to try some pumpkin. So this is actually the recipe here that we're going to be trying today. So this is the fall spiced pumpkin bread. And I have tried it out. And I can say it is absolutely delicious. So at first it may look like quite a bit, right? So we've got quite a few ingredients. But once you actually take a second look at it, you'll realize a lot of this is stuff you've already got in your home. So here we've got all-purpose flour, um, we've got some whole wheat flour, baking powder, baking soda, pumpkin pie spice, salt, melted margarine, sugar, honey, pumpkin puree, olive oil, eggs, and chopped walnuts. So nothing terribly challenging here. A lot of the stuff you're already going to have in your cabinet at home. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and transition into our actual cooking station here. So if you all will bear with me for just a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and, you know, do what you all came here for. So down on the bottom right side of the screen here, you are actually going to be able to see, you know, what exactly I'm mixing. And I've tried my best to label things here so that it's easier for you all to tell what I'm doing as well. So our first step is actually going to be take our, to take our all-purpose flour. So we've got a half a cup of that. And we're going to go ahead and add all these ingredients to our first bowl. So we've got all-purpose flour. We've got our whole wheat flour. There's one one fourth cups of that. We're going to take um, one and one half teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I've actually already got that all pre-mixed right here in this little bitty container right here, as you can see. So we're gonna add all that to the container. And that is as simple as it is. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna take, these are all of our dry ingredients. So it's all of our flours, our salts, our pumpkin pie spices, nothing too terribly difficult yet. So this is our first bowl. So I've gone ahead and blended all that for you there, as you can see. And next, we're actually gonna go ahead and move on to our wet ingredients. So this is gonna be stuff like our margarine, our sugar. Um, sugar is kind of the exception to the wet ingredient. They're the honey, the pumpkin puree, the olive oil, and our two eggs. So I've got our half a cup of margarine here. Our two eggs that I have already actually pre-whisked before the program here today. Our olive oil. Pumpkin, honey, and sugar. Honey can be a little bit difficult to um, get out of the container sometimes when you're measuring it. But if you all want a fun tip, if you ever have to measure like any kind of oil, if you lightly coat the, um, the inside of your cup, it'll actually come out a lot easier for you. So here I've actually got our two cups of pumpkin. Another helpful tip, um, one standard can of pumpkin is actually going to be exactly two cups. So if you want to save yourself from dirtying up a little container there, you can go ahead and just dump that whole can of pumpkin in there. And last but not least, we have our sugar. Okay, so remember, first we mixed all of our dry ingredients, but now we're going to go ahead and do all the wet ones. 
So um, this bread, like I said, I have already made it earlier today, but it is literally, it's very good. I do have to say, I was a little bit skeptical because it does have quite a bit of pumpkin on it, but I promise if you all give this a try, you will not be disappointed. Oh, welcome, Julie. I see your comment there. Hope you're enjoying the stream. Okay, so now we've got all of our wet ingredients mixed up in this bowl here, and we've also got our dry ingredients from earlier. Our next step, all we're going to do, nice and simple, we're going to take our wet ingredients, and we are actually going to mix them into our, our bowl with our dry ingredients here. I'm actually going to put that whisk in there for now. So this recipe, um, it is available online. The University of Kentucky has a ton of really nice recipes that use locally grown Kentucky Proud vegetables. Um, you can find those on our website. I did have the link up there earlier, but I will make sure to go ahead and post that in the chat at the end of the stream as well. So all I've done here, like I said, I've put our wet ingredients into our dry ingredients, and we're going to go ahead and mix that up. Now, whenever you're mixing this, you do want to make sure that you get it mixed nice and good. Otherwise, whenever you bake your bread, um, you're, you're going to be a little bit disappointed whenever you cut or bite into it. You're going to find big old chunks of flour. So you really want to take your time with this step and make sure you get it good. Always want to make sure you scrape the sides of your bowls, the bottom. Those are two of the best places for the flour to kind of hide on you. But as you can see there, we've got a really good, nice, consistent mixture going on. I'll let you all get a better look at that. All right. So now that we've done that, we are actually going to take a 8x4 loaf pan, and we're going to definitely spray it. So I have some canola oil here. It is a little bit healthier and lower in fat than your typical vegetable oil, so I would recommend using that or olive. All right. And last but not least, we are going to go ahead and dump our mixture into the pan here. Now, um, just a little, another tip here. Earlier today when I was experimenting with this, it was quite a bit to fit into one of these pans. So um, the second time around, I am actually going to recommend maybe putting this into two separate pans. Or if you do decide to stick it all into one pan, maybe stick a, uh, like a baking sheet under it. That way, if you do get a little bit of spillover, you know, you're not going to have a huge mess in your oven. So I am actually going to leave it about right there, which is about half of our mixture, maybe a little over half. I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out. And your last step here is a one-third cup of walnuts. Now, some of you may not like nuts, right? So if you want to leave this out, it's not going to make or break your recipe. It's only going to make it better, in my personal opinion, at least. All right, so now that we've done that, um, ideally, prior to starting this, you know, you're going to have your oven preheated to 350 degrees, but... Luckily for you all, I've actually kind of gone ahead and mixed it up a little bit for you. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to stick this in your oven for one hour. After um, 40 minutes of the hour, you're actually going to take it out, cover the top with aluminum foil, and then you're going to pull it out after the last 20 minutes. And I will show you what that looks like. So once it's all said and done, you're going to end up with this. This beautiful, beautiful loaf of pumpkin bread. And it is really good. And like I said, those walnuts, they really just kind of add to it. Um, but yeah, it is delicious. We did do a taste test at my office earlier today. So like I said, if you're a little bit skeptical about pumpkin, or maybe you're looking to mix it up this Thanksgiving and you don't want to make the same old pies and cakes you always do, I would highly recommend giving this a try. But for now, guys, so I've already actually mentioned that you're going to want to make sure you cover it with foil, you know, bake it for the additional 20 minutes. That is actually it, right? So remember, even though we looked at that um, recipe card and it seemed like it had a lot of steps, but it's really not that difficult. And that's quite frankly how a lot of these recipes are. Cooking at home doesn't have to be hard. Cooking at home can be fun and very rewarding as well. 
So at this time, I'm actually gonna take a few minutes here or a few seconds just to see if anybody has any questions. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead and post them in the chat. <laughs> Anita, if you would like a sample, we'll have some at the office tomorrow. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you. I really did work quite a bit or pretty hard on setting all this up. <laughs> Lisa looks yummy. I can confirm it's very yummy indeed. But yeah, if nobody has any other questions for me, um, you know, I did take the time. I put this together. So I'm going to ask, actually ask you all to do me a quick favor. So it's very easy, I promise. I wouldn't make you all do something hard. Um, so if you want to see me do more stuff like this in the future, so let's say you want to see more cooking videos online, on Facebook, whatever, do me a favor, go to this link right here. So it's tinyurl.com forward slash FB live cooking. It'll, it's a survey. It actually benefits me. It lets me know what I did good, what I did bad, maybe what you'd like to see, maybe what you want changed. Or you could even recommend a recipe if you wanted. So please, if you all have like a few minutes, it won't take you very long at all. Just go to that link, um, fill it out, and I'll, yeah, I'll read them. All the um, responses are anonymous, so you know, like I said, your name won't be tied to it at all. But if nobody has any other questions, um, I'd like to thank you for your time. I had a lot of fun doing this. I had a lot of fun setting it up. And um, I really look forward to doing it again for you all next week. So the next session of this is actually going to be November the 27th at 6 o'clock. Um, I promise it'll be another really good recipe. It'll be really easy and it'll be really fun to make as well. So with, without further ado, I'll see you all next time.